Um, what else are we seeing? So let's talk about the uh, the software. So you, we, one of the things you were talking about that I really liked, you were going down the list. So on Mike's slide, he had all the new features so around the core. Can you just go down the core and rattle off your version of what, what it means and what it is? So you start off with, um, say, HBase. We talked about that already. What are the other ones that are out there? So the projects that we have right the now? The projects that are around, those tools that are being built. Yeah, so the foundational, the foundational one, as we mentioned before, is HDFS for storage, MapReduce for processing. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the immediate layer above that is how to make MapReduce easier for the masses. So how can he, uh, not everybody knows how to learn MapReduce, Java. Yeah. Everybody knows SQL, right? So, so one of the most successful projects right now that has the highest attach rate, meaning people usually when they install Hadoop, install it as well, is Hive. So Hive takes uh, SQL, and to Jeff Hammerbacker, uh, my co-founder, when he was at Facebook, his team built the Hive system. Essentially, Hive takes SQL, so you don't have to learn a new language, you already know SQL, and then converts that into MapReduce for you. That not only expands the developer base for how many people can use Hadoop, but also makes it easier to integrate Hadoop uh, through ODBC and JDBC, integrated with BI tools like MicroStrategy and Tableau and Informatica, et cetera, et cetera. He mentioned so, R too, he mentioned R programming. R as language. well, yeah, R is one of our best uh, partnerships. We're very, very uh, happy with them. So that's, uh, that's one of the very key projects is Hive. A sister project to Hive is called Pig. Um, Pig Latin uh, is a language that uh, Yahoo invented that uh, you have to learn the language, but it's very, easy, it's very easy to learn compared to MapReduce. But once you learn it, you can, uh, you can specify very deep uh, data pipelines. Right? SQL is good for queries, it's not good for data pipelines because it becomes very convoluted, it becomes very hard for the, the human brain to understand it. So uh, Pig is much more natural to the human brain. It's more like Perl, very similar to Perl scripting kind of languages. So with Pig, you can write very, very long data pipelines. Again, very successful project, uh, doing very, very well. Uh, another key project is EdgeBase, like you said. So EdgeBase uh, allows you to do low latency, so you can do very, very quick lookups, and also allows you to do uh, transactions, so you can do up updates, inserts, and deletes. Uh, so one of the talks here at Hadoop World, which I recommend people watch uh, uh, w when the videos come out, is the talk by Jonathan Gray uh, from Facebook, and he talked about how they use EdgeBase. Uh, jo He's Jonathan coming on here in the cube later. Yeah, so you should, should grill him on that. So they use EdgeBase now for many, many things within Facebook. They have a big team now committed to building uh, and improving EdgeBase uh, with us and with the community at large. And uh, they're using it for doing their online uh, messaging system, the live mail system in uh, Facebook is powered by EdgeBase right now. Uh, again, pro and eBay, the Cassini project, uh, they gave a keynote earlier today at the conference as well, is using EdgeBase as well. So EdgeBase is definitely one of the projects that's growing very, very quickly uh, right now uh, within the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, another key project uh, that Jeff alluded to earlier when he was on here is Flume. Uh, so Flume is very instrumental because you have this uh, nice system Hadoop, but it's, Hadoop is useless un unless you have data inside it. So how do you get the data inside Hadoop? So Flume essentially is this very nice framework for having these agents all over your infrastructure, inside mm -hmm. your web servers, inside your application servers, inside your mobile devices, your network equipment, that collects all of that data and then uh, reliably and, and materializes it inside Hadoop. So Flume does that. Uh, another good project is Uzi. There's so many of them, I don't know how, how long you want me to keep going here, but, no, but Uzi, oh, uh, Uzi is a workflow processing system. Uh, so Uzi allows you to define uh, a series of jobs, some of them in Pig, some of them in Hive, some of them in MapReduce. You can define a series of them and then link them to each other and say only start this job when these other job fin two jobs finish because I'm waiting for the input from them before I can kick off and so on. Uh, so Uzi is a very nice framework that will do, will do that, will manage the whole graph of jobs for you and retry things when they fail, et cetera, et cetera. Um, another good project is WIRR, W-H-I-R-R, -R, and WIRR allows you to very easily start a Hadoop cluster on top of Amazon EC2, on top of Rackspace, uh, uh, virtualized environment. It, it, it's more for kicking off, it's for kicking off Hadoop instances or edge-based instances mm -hmm. on uh, any virtual infrastructure. Okay. Uh, uh, VMware vCloud, so that it supports all of the major um, uh, vCloud, sorry, all of the mission, uh, all of the major virtualized infrastructure uh, systems out there, Eucalyptus as well and so on. Uh, so that's where, W-H-I-R-R. Uh, Avro uh, uh, is another key project, it's, one, it's uh, Duck Cutting's main kind of project right now, I don't know if Duck Cutting, Duck Cutting came on stage yet yeah, with you guys. Yeah. So Avro, Avro is a project about how do we encode with our files the schema of these files, right? Because when you open up a text file and you don't know how to, what the columns mean and how to parse it, it becomes very hard to work with it. So Avro allows you to do that much more easily. It's also useful for doing RPC, what we call RPC, 
remote procedure calls mm -hmm. for having different services talk to each other. Avro is very useful for that as well. Uh, and the list go keeps going on and on. Scoop. Mahout, yeah, which we just added. Thanks for, for yeah. reminding me of Mahout. We just added Mahout very recently. What actually. is that? I'm not familiar with it. So Mahout is a data mining library. So Mahout takes some of the most popular uh, data mining algorithms for doing uh, clustering and regression and uh, statistical modeling and uh, implements them using the MapReduce model. Does it have, does it have machine learning in it too? Or? Yes, yes. So yeah. that's the machine yeah. learning. So, so yeah, st state vector machines and so on. What's so, Scoop? So Scoop, uh, you know all of them. <laughs> so thanks for feeding me all the names. <laughs> the ones I, I don't forget. understand. There's so many of them, right? I can't even remember all of them. So Scoop actually um, is a very interesting project. It's short for SQL to Hadoop, uh, hence the name Scoop, right? So SQ from SQL and OOP from Hadoop. And it also means Scoop as in scooping up stuff when you scoop up ice cream. Yeah. And the idea for Scoop is to make it easy to move data between relational systems like Oracle, Teradata, Netiza, Vertica, and so on, and Hadoop. So you can very simply say Scoop, the name of the table inside the relation system, the name of the file inside Hadoop, and the, the table will be copied over to the file, and vice versa. You can say scoop the name of the file in Hadoop, the name awesome. of the table over there, it will move the table over there. So it's a connectivity tool between the relational world and the Hadoop world. Great, great Go tutorial. Um, and all of these are Apache projects. They're all projects built yeah, within the Apache. This is not part of your... your